In this video, I'm going to explain how to create a successful app in 10 steps. And this is a follow up video from my other video where I explain how I created a successful app called Fudget to the point where I was able to quit my job. And if you've not seen that video, I'll link to it at the end of this video. So step one and the most important is create an app that meets a demand. And if you don't get this step right, then none of the other steps in this video will make any difference. And so at the time I created Fudget, there were no simple budgeting apps. All of the popular ones had a steep learning curve and I could tell from users' complaints in the reviews about these apps that there was a demand for a simple budgeting app, one that anyone could just pick up and use within minutes. And I also knew that Fudget would solve a problem that I was facing. And chances are, if you're facing a problem, then unless it's a really niche problem, then other people will be facing that problem too. And so this is what happened with Fudget. It was the right idea at the right time, and it filled a demand that people were calling out for, and solved a real problem that real people were having. So how can you think of an idea for an app that meets a demand? Well, all of the apps that I've made have been created to solve a problem that I had myself. So Fudget is an app which solves a problem for me, and I use it every day, and I couldn't function without it. And I've also created other apps which I don't use every day, or hardly at all, and guess what? none of these apps have been successful. So you could start by asking yourself if there's an app that you could make that would make your life easier, that would solve a problem that you're facing, something that you would use every day. Chances are, if you want a solution to a particular problem, then other people will too. Or you could think about the kind of app that you wanna create and then look at users' reviews for similar apps. What are people complaining about in the reviews section? Are people crying out for features that you could create with your app? Sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel with an app, but just make something that already exists better. And if you wanna stimulate your creative mind and come up with ideas, then one thing I do is, whenever I'm using something that's really cool, whether it's an app or a website, I ask myself questions like, what makes this app great? Or how could I improve this app? Or how could I combine aspects of this app with another app to create something new? To come up with ideas for apps, you really need to be aware of other apps and be aware of the problems that you're facing and other people are facing and ask yourself these kinds of questions. And lots of successful apps are basically just combinations of two or more other apps. For example, Fudget is basically just a kind of combination of Excel and a to-do app called Clear. But anyway, it's critical that there's a real demand for your app. If there's no demand for it, it won't succeed. And the rest of the steps in this guide won't make any difference. Step two is ask for reviews and feedback. Not many of your app's users will go out of their way to leave you a review or to give you feedback. But having a steady stream of positive reviews for your app is critical to its success because good reviews not only give your app the social proof that people need to pull the trigger and download your app, but they also push your app higher in the search rankings, leading to more downloads and in turn, more positive reviews and even more downloads. But you have to be careful about how you do this. You don't wanna be that guy who asks for a review as soon as the app starts up. This just really annoys people. And I'm sure you've been annoyed by that too. And this might actually get you a lot of bad reviews. So what you wanna do is wait until you're sure that the user is actively using your app. So what I do with Fudget is wait until they've created a budget and added at least 20 items to that budget. Because if they've got this far, then they're probably actively using the app. But even at this point, you don't wanna just straight up ask for a review as some people still won't be happy. So what I do is show a pop-up asking if they're enjoying the app. And I also show a picture of myself with my family to show that I'm a real person because people like to engage with people and not faceless corporations. And then if they tap on yes, then I ask them to leave a review and send them to the leave a review page on the App Store. And if they're not happy and they tap on no, I ask them to give me some feedback and they can then send me an email to tell me why they're not happy. And this has two massive advantages. It means most of my reviews on the App Store are positive, and it also means I get a steady stream of useful feedback from my active users. Step three is listen to your users. So when you have an app and you have a good feedback mechanism set up, you get a lot of messages from people asking for features and improvements. And you need to listen to your users because this app is for them and not you. But you don't want to just add every single feature that every single person asks for. Number one, it would take you way too long. 
And number two, it would end up bloating your app with features that most people don't even want. So for Fudge It, I created a spreadsheet for all of these feature requests. And I kept account of exactly how many times a particular feature had been requested. And this way I was able to see exactly which features were most in demand. And so I focused on improving the app over time, always adding the most in demand features and ignoring the less in demand features. The more you can keep your users happy, the more downloads you'll get, the more positive reviews you'll get, and the more time people will spend in your app, clicking on ads, and the more in-app purchases you will sell. Step four is use the freemium model. It's very difficult to get people to pay for an app up front these days. People want to try it out for free first. And maybe if you have a huge budget, you can spend a load of money on App Store ads and Facebook ads to get people to download your paid app. But for most indie app devs, this is just too expensive. So I believe using the freemium model was critical to Fudget's success. And this means giving the app away for free as a more or less complete app but then including extra features that the user can pay for via in-app purchases. So what I did with Fudget was add an in-app purchase, which unlocked extra features like Dropbox Save and Restore, a calculator, and the ability to export budgets to CSV files, and also removing ads. But you have to be really careful about how you make your in-app purchase visible within your app. If you bury it away on your settings page, then hardly anyone will even find it, let alone buy it. But on the flip side, if you keep showing people annoying pop-ups, asking them to buy it, then you're just gonna annoy people and they might just leave your app. So what I do in Fudget is show the user that there are extra features available within the interface itself. And I just gray out these features, such as this calculator button. So when the user taps on this button, I can tell them about this feature and the other features and encourage them to buy the pro upgrade. And so this way, users get to discover the pro upgrade for themselves instead of through me randomly showing annoying pop-ups. And this results in a lot more people buying the in-app purchase. Step five is display ads with AdMob. Although most of Fudget's revenue still comes from the in-app purchase, Adding ads to the app was critical for creating a little bit of extra revenue that I needed to reach my quit my job goal. So in Fudget, I just have these banner ads at the bottom and it only took me about two hours to add these ads. And overnight, my revenue increased by around 20 pounds a day just from a couple of hours work. So in terms of time spent versus revenue gained, adding these ads is probably the most profitable work I did on the app because I spent two hours on it. And over the years, I've made over 60,000 pounds just from ad clicks. Not bad for a couple of hours work. And yeah, people don't like ads, but you can always give the user the option of removing these ads as part of your in-app purchase. And if you're enjoying this video so far, do me a favor and smash the like button. And if you have any questions about these steps, then please leave a comment below. Step six is cover multiple platforms. Although the iOS version of Fudget has always made the most money, on its own, it didn't make quite enough money for me to reach my goal. So releasing the app on other platforms was critical. After releasing Fudget on Android, Mac, and Windows, my revenue increased by around 30 to 40 pounds a day. And you never know which platform is gonna be the most successful for your app. In my case, iOS has always been the most successful platform but other developers have had more success with Android. And creating cross-platform apps has never been easier thanks to frameworks like Quasar, which allow you to cover all of these platforms with one code base. Step seven is learn and implement App Store optimization. So Fudget didn't really start to take off and still I started to implement App Store optimization or ASO. So what is ASO? It's basically where you optimize your app for the phrases that people are searching for on the app store. And most people will find your app via search, so this is absolutely critical. So how do you do this? Well, you can use a service such as Mobile Action or Sensor Tower to find the keywords relevant to your app that people are searching for. And these services will tell you how many people are searching for a particular phrase and also how strong the competition is for those keywords. So what you can do is use these services to compile a list of phrases that you want your app to rank for. 
and then implement these keywords onto your App Store page, with the goal being to try and get your app to appear in the top 10 apps when a user searches for a particular phrase. And the main way you do this is by adding these keywords to your app's title, subtitle, keywords field, and description. So keywords in your app's title are the most powerful, followed by your subtitle, and then the keywords field on iOS, and the description field on Android. So if you look at my Fudget page on the App Store, you can see that the title is Fudget Budget Planner Tracker, and the subtitle is Finance and Money Management. And this title and subtitle are not just random. I put an enormous amount of time into these to make sure that they rank for as many of the most searched for and relevant phrases that people are searching for as possible. So using these particular words in my title and subtitle means that Fudget ranks highly in search results for many different phrases that people are searching for, such as budget, budget planner, budget tracker, finance planner, finance tracker, money planner, money tracker, money management, and many, many more. Step eight is optimize your icon and screenshots. So when I first released Fudget, it had this really ugly icon with a pig on it and awful screenshots. And you wanna be the kind of app that people have on their home screen on the first page. And people don't want an ugly pig icon on their first page on the home screen. So I got a professional designer to redesign the icon. And I also redesigned the app based on the icon. And this led to a massive impact on downloads. And your screenshots in the App Store are critical too. My first screenshots were pretty ugly and they just pointed out the features of the app. And this was a mistake. What you wanna do with your screenshots is point out the benefits of the app, how it will make your user's life better. And you also wanna include social proof whenever possible to give your app credibility. So if you look at Fudget's first two screenshots, this first simple statement is super powerful. It says over 1 million people love the simplicity of Fudget. So in this one statement, I'm communicating a lot. First of all, that over a million people have downloaded it and that these users find it incredibly easy to use, which is the main benefit of Fudget over other budgeting apps. And then below, I show that the app has been featured by popular sites such as Forbes and Engadget, and this gives the app credibility. And then on the second page, I state the highest rated budget app by users, which gives the app more social proof. So I'm not even mentioning a single feature on these first two screenshots, yet they're incredibly powerful at convincing people to download the app purely by selling the key benefit of the app and by displaying some social proof. And using ASO, I was able to increase Fudget's daily downloads from 100 a day to over 1,000 a day. Without good ASO, nobody can find your app. It's practically invisible. Step nine is get featured on Apps Gone Free. So a key component to Fudget's success was getting it featured on Apps Gone Free. And this is both an app and a website where people can find temporarily free apps to download. And you can submit your app for free to be featured. And since Fudget is already free, I set my in-app purchase to be free for the day and got it featured. And this resulted in about 20,000 downloads over a couple of days the first time I did it. And this pushed Fudget up in the search rankings. And even after that huge spike of traffic died down, I was still getting more than double the downloads I was getting prior to being featured. And I've now had Fudget featured on Apps Gone Free several times, and every time it's had fantastic results. Step 10 is to create an email list. So on my settings page in Fudget, I have a little form that users can fill in to join the mailing list. And this list now has thousands of users on it. And this list has been absolutely critical to the success of Fudget. So here's just some of the ways I've been able to use this list. I've used it to let people know that there's a promotion, i.e. a free or discounted pro upgrade. I've used it to recruit beta testers to test new versions of the app before it goes public. I've used it to send out surveys to ask people questions and gain insight about what they want from the app. And I've also used it to promote other apps. Uh, when I release Fudget 2, which will be a separate app, I can immediately let thousands of people know about this. And many of those people will download the app and give it some starting traction and starting reviews. 
and normally getting this initial traction from zero is incredibly difficult and slow. So this list will massively speed up the process of making Fudget 2 successful. And if you have any questions about any of these 10 steps, or if you have your own tips or your own app successes to share, then please leave a comment below. Uh, make sure you check out the whole story of how I created Fudget and quit my job in this video. Uh, make sure you hover my face over there and click subscribe if you haven't already. Every subscription helps me to create more content for this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.